Hello there and a warm welcome to the program. Good morning, my name is Yusuf Ibrahim. It is Sunday, the 12th day of November 2017. And this is the Sunday edition. I'm standing in for Ben Kitili. Of course, we have a guest right here in studio with us. We have on my far right, Dismas Moku as a political risk analyst. And then we have Mutinda Kavemba, who is also a political analyst. And then Hezbon Owila, who also who is also a political analyst. We're going to discuss in detail all the political development during the week. As they say, you never get a dull moment when it comes to Kenya's politics at a time when the NASA leader, now it's known as the NRM, that is the National Resistance Movement leader, Raila Odinga, is still in the U.S., is expected to jet back into the country on Thursday. And today, we also expect a political rally of some sort by the NRM. It's going to be led by one of their principals, Musali Madavari. And we are told their agenda today is to roll out their strategy or, you know, uh, their program as far as their resistance agenda is concerned. We're going to discuss all that in detail. But first things first, let's take a look at what is happening or what has been you know, put on our dailies here. And I'm going to focus on both the uh, Sunday Nation as well as the Sunday Standard. And on the Sunday Nation, on the splash, they have everything to do with the highest court in the land, that is the Supreme Court. That is where two, I mean, some petitions have been filed against, you know, the election of President Uru Kinata on October 26th. It's some sort of a deja vu moment because it also happened after the August 8th election. And on their splash, they've clearly indicated that hidden cards in court poll battle ahead of the uh, D-Day. And uh, they're saying this time around the petition is focusing on details of election conduct and scrutiny of forms. Lawyers of uh, President Urukinata, uh, Raila Odinga, and IBC to file responses by 5 p.m. And other parties, you know, who are interested in this uh, case, uh, they are also going to request to join in the petition. So, Dismas, let me begin with you. There are those who are saying, of course, NASA has not filed this petition. Uh, there are people who have done that, that on their individual capacity. But the you know, political analysts, obs observers were saying that you know, NASA might have a hand in these petitions. Well, it, it would be naive for anybody to imagine that a NASA does not have a hand in these uh, petitions. Mm -hmm. And uh, you must not have somebody from NASA doing these petitions for you to confirm that actually it's uh, NASA. All these people who are doing it could be proxies working in close consultation with uh, NASA. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, the, the matter by Njojo Mue or uh, Khalifa Mohammed from uh, Mombasa. There may not be a direct link, but they must be. If you look at the backstory, there must be a connection. That would be the first level. Then the second level, they may apply to be enjoined in the matter as interested parties. Again, not necessarily representing NASA, but achieving the NASA objectives. Mm -hmm. So it would be very interesting to see how the cases go out. Mm -hmm. But what really stands out in these uh, cases, what the petitions are arguing, is about uh, the use of uh, biometrics. Because they claim that during the last election, there were about 30,000 uh, voters who did not have the biometrics uh, in place. Yes. And then um, a miracle has happened in the process. 60 days later, mm -hmm. you've got about 1.6 million people who voted without having uh, used the biometrics, mm -hmm. that they had to use their fingerprints. So the question people are beginning to ask, how come you've got these 1.6 million people who uh, 60 days ago, they were able to do their normal voting, but this time around, probably they've had the opportunity to go maybe to a mine somewhere, a quarry, where their fingerprints have been uh, compromised, mm -hmm. and now they have to use an alternative uh, mean of voting. So that would be a, a big issue. I'm sure these are some of the things the petitioners have already highlighted on. Yeah. We expect the judges to act on it. Mm -hmm. Now, Mutinda, from this was observation there, he's saying that, you know, it will be naive to think that NASA doesn't have a hand in this. And some of these people who filed the petition are members of the civil society. You've seen, you know, these people have been at loggerheads with the NGO board and to some extent the government. So where will this put them? You know, I, I want to concur with him that uh, as, as much as NASA officially has not uh, enjoined itself or has not filed the Actually, petition... Actually, they've officially distanced themselves, themselves from the petition. Yes, but uh, I, I want to agree with the sentiments that it would be naive for anyone to imagine that they have got no interest or, but, but, uh, or even more clearly unhidden hand behind what is happening. Mm -hmm. And you've seen there, there are several uh, petitions that have gone to court. And, uh, of course, they are very much interested in what... Uh, the outcome would be. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as for the relationship between the government and the NGOs, that is going to be handled uh, uh, as per case basis. Because yes. that will depend on what are the issues being raised as per each NGO. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think that necessarily has anything to do with uh, the, the, the court cases. Mm -hmm. Because 
these are separate things that uh, there, there is the regulatory regime for NGOs that has got uh, a right to, uh, to, to, to ensure that uh, their law is complied. But, but there are people out there who might think, you know, that these civil societies are siding with NASA. I thought they're supposed to be neutral. Is that the case? Are they supposed to be neutral in the first place? Yeah, they are supposed to be neutral. Mm -hmm. They are supposed to be neutral. But uh, you see, sometimes uh, neutrality is, is uh, something that is uh, not very easily attained when... Uh, we have uh, such polarized uh, positions mm -hmm. like uh, is the current case. Yes. But of course, ideally, they mm -hmm. should be uh, very neutral. But mm -hmm. uh, we know that in practice, and, and actually NRM has made it very clear that uh, it is no longer NASA. It is now NRM, and NRM is bringing a broad-based coalition, including the civil society. Mm -hmm. Now that already again questions whether are they really are they really as uh, neutral as they would want us to believe or mm -hmm. they are also partisan in, in regard to that. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I remember very well when they were talking about moving from NASA to NRM they were saying it's now because it's now no longer just about the political players but they want to m make a very broad based coalition to bring in other stakeholders outside the traditional political yes. players. And they were very clear that that would uh, include the civil society mm -hmm. organization. So I, I, I am not very sure about uh, them being very neutral, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I am sure that uh, NASA has an interest in whatever is happening in, in court, as much as they do not want to show an open hand yes. in, in the matter. Hezbun, you, you before, before I come to you, let's allow Hezbun to get into the discussion. Now, Hezbun, Dismas has already said, you know, there's some kind of relationship between these uh, petitions with, with NASA. Of course, NASA have come out clearly saying that, you know, they don't have any interest uh, with this petition. They're going to fund their, their own people's assembly and, you know, the list is endless. So do you think NASA has some relationship with this petition? Let's begin from there. Well, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, if you look at our political dispensation, it's, it's a bit uh, clear that we have two sides of the political divide. And they are very strong, so much so that there is no third force. And therefore, any organization that takes a position. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know, I mean, if you don't stand for anything, you stand for nothing at all. So any organization that takes a position on issues mm -hmm. will definitely be taking a position that may not be, you know, in line with either side of the political divide, and of course, support one side of the political divide. And I want to look at it that way, that these uh, individuals and, and organizations have taken a position that uh, the election that we had on the 26th of October was not valid, and therefore they are going to court to challenge, because it's only the Supreme Court that can do that. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that they've taken a position, and the position seems to be leaning towards NASA, mm -hmm. there is that perception, you know, that they are working on the behest of NASA. But the fact that NASA has distanced itself, uh, I want to believe that Kenyans should look at this from a very objective point of view, that these are just Kenyans who are looking at the electoral process, and they believe in the rule of law, and they have a strong feeling that... Uh, the election as it was conducted on the 26th did not conform to the rule of law. Mm -hmm. yes. This was well, the point I wanted to betray is that uh, all over the world, the civil society, they normally proactively pursue the public interest. And wherever you are, public, you, are, you are pursuing a public interest, you'll always be in conflict with the government of the day. Uh -huh. So erroneously, people may uh, assume that you are working with the opposition over that particular government. Like, for instance, these two institutions who've gone to the, to the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. if they are successful, the principal beneficiary is going to be NASA. So at some stage, people can erroneously accuse them. And that's where you see Fazul coming in. Mm -hmm. For him, wherever he's seated at his office, he believes that anybody who is pursuing a public interest matter is against the government of the day. And he proactively goes out of his way to try and intimidate them, writing letters, accusing them, instead of uh, subjecting them to fair administrative process. And it even happens all over in the media when uh, you're doing uh, analysis on this show. Mm -hmm. If you say anything which is uh, critical of uh, the Jubilee administration, People erroneously dump you into a ground and they say you are a NASA person. The next time, assuming that NASA takes office and you maintain your position of pursuing public interest, then people again would say now you've gone to bed uh, with Jubilee. And, and I think in Kenya no one expects civil societies to go out of their way and, and praise the government. The and you know they're not supposed to be doing that. Yes. Uh, fundamentally speaking, their reason that is to criticize the government of the day when they've done a mistake. If they do what they're supposed to be doing, then... Uh, 
that's their responsibility. But when they go out of the rails, then every person needs to come out. And this invites us to a conversation, especially the, the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church, the last couple of days, has been uh, seated on the fence. Even when uh, members of their own clergy <coughs> get uh, shot by the police, when uh, sad things are happening, they sit on the fence. Which, which brings to the question, is the religious leadership in Kenya supposed to sit on the fence or remain neutral? Or they're supposed to identify the public good and pursue it whether or not Jubilee is happy with it, whether NASA is happy with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to countries like um, the, the Philippines, where you have the Catholic Church, which is uh, very strong, they've identified their priorities and they pursue them. They don't care whether the government of the day is happy, they don't care whether the opposition is happy. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to pursue it. But the tragedy we have in Kenya today is uh, our religious leaders, both the Christians and Muslims, they conveniently sit on the fence. Even members of the private sector. You look at uh, KEPSA, you look at the Kenya Organization of Manufacturers. Actually, the there's some religious commerce. leaders who've taken open position, especially at the coast. I think you've seen those uh, clips from the coast some time back. Well, maybe that could be a, a drop of water in the ocean uh -huh. since they come from the coast, but we expect them to be more proactive. Mm -hmm. If the election is not free, fair, nor credible, then the church needs to call a spade a spade without fearing that they're going to be branded to be NASA or Jubilee. They must not sit on the fence. Mm -hmm. When a member of their own, when a priest gets a kill in manners which are suspicious, they need to come out and call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. Look at the private sector today. N the N Nairobi CBD, a few days ago, we were told that uh, the hawkers have invaded the place. They're making business uh, almost impossible to deal. Now, KEPSA, or the Chambers of Commerce and Industry, have not come out to defend their members. Because some members of KEPSA mm -hmm. run shops in the CBD. Now, when you allow people to come and start uh, selling wares in front of your shop, then your customers, unless they're very agile, they're not able to jump into your uh, business premises. Mm -hmm. Now, you'd expect that KEPSA would stop sitting at the fence, they come out and make noise. But because them, they're happy to work with the government of the day, the government of uh, President Kenyatta and uh, Governor Sonko, they conveniently decide to keep quiet. And I think for Kenya, we need to get to that space where you can call a spade a spade and go home without fear of uh, being intimidated or losing business opportunities. Yes. Husband, uh, have a burning issue? Yes, I have a burning <laughs> issue. Uh, well, I think the whole idea of being neutral, to me, seems to be misplaced and misunderstood in Kenya. Uh, I mean, you cannot be neutral. When th there are things that are never gray. It's black and white, and you must take a position on issues. And I think the biggest problem we have in Kenya is that sometimes you want to take position on issues and stick to those positions, even when they're not making a lot of sense, mm -hmm. and we don't even strive to articulate issues, reasons, and why we are actually taking such positions. And from where I see it, I think any, 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 any organization, non-governmental organization, be it in opposition, the media, the civil society, they must have positions on issues based on ideology, mm -hmm. and they should not be afraid of taking those positions, whether the positions are critical of the government or, or of the opposition. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, think, I think you've delivered that point. I, th mm -hmm. I think they've, they've expressed their position <laughs> by even filing the petition at the, at the Supreme Court. Now, Kavemba, let's come back to this. I've already mentioned that this is some sort of a deja vu moment. You know, it happened after the August 8th. You know, the, uh, the uh, pre President Ruh uh, win was invalidated by the Supreme Court. This time around, we're back at the courts again, the highest court in the land. So where will this put the judiciary? Because there are people who have been, you know, saying that this is some sort of an abuse to the uh, judicial system. I, 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 I think it's, it's actually, it, 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 it cements the, 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 the perception that Kenya is embracing the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like you're saying, th these are not very easy times. And uh, the matters that are being uh, uh, adjudicated upon and the Supreme Court are quite sensitive. They are, they are actually at the center of its power. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's about who's going to exercise sovereign power on behalf of the people. And uh, that, that is not an easy thing. But the thing, the, 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 the beauty of it is that we went through it and uh, hell did not break loose. And we are now back again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that is a good thing because we've been calling for that. I think NASA will not take that lightly because apparently almost all supporters of NASA didn't, didn't, didn't participate in that election this week. No, uh, you see, th 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 that's going to be determined again uh -huh. by the Supreme Court. You, yeah. you, you know, it's good to be fair that uh, in, the, in the last election, the one that was held on the 8th, it is NASA that went to court. And actually the court ruled in their favor and they told us to go back. And uh, the person who's going to determine the legality or otherwise of the 26th October election, again, is the Supreme Court. There is nobody else as per our constitution and our laws who has the 
constitutional mandate to determine the legality or otherwise of that election. So at the end of the day, before that determination is made, the rest is politic. Mm -hmm. Because what is going to be binding as to the legality or otherwise of the election that was held on the 26th is going to be the ruling by the Supreme Court. If they decide to invalidate it like they did on the 8th, we will have, have no other choice than to go with whatever they are going to say. Yeah, that and and the if, they are going to, uh -huh. uh, if they are going to uphold it, as bitter as it may be, in any case, even uh -huh. the ruling that they gave on the 1st of September was very bitter to a section of this country. Yes, but and, they that's, had and, that's why, and that's why, and that's why I raised the question: Where will this put the judiciary? Because immediately after they annulled the election of President Uhuru Kenyatta, they were praised not just in the continent but across the world. Then after that, you remember, just before the election, they failed to get to a quorum, and then some judges went missing. So it seems like it's a bit too much for them. Yusuf, it's not uh, too much for them mm -hmm. because these gentlemen are members of the Supreme Court. They've not just been uh, dropped there. They understand the law very well. Majority of them have been at the High Court and at the Court of Appeal. The same judges who went missing, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, ordinarily, mm -hmm. before we look at those other factors. So yeah. on a normal day, this issue would not be so complicated as Kavemba says. It's uh, black or white. Did the elections conform with the Constitution and the relevant rules, uh, rules and regulations? It would be very easy for the judges to form a decision whether it's black or white. But now let's look at the environment where they're operating in. They gave, the, they gave their orders that we must have a repeat election, and they said it must be done with strict conformity with the Constitution. You know, so that the IBC needed to have identified the illegalities and the irregularities. Mm -hmm. According to NASA, the illegalities and irregularities so identified were not addressed by, by IBC. The chairman is on record a week to the election saying that from where he seated, he's unable to guarantee the nation that the election is going to be free, fair, and credible. Then a few days later, he says, now the, the, the environment has all of a sudden changed. I can guarantee this. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, Dr. Kombe who, who said that uh, from uh, the environment she was operating in, she did not want to participate in a process which was merely going to be a rubber stamp. And then you recall there were social media attacks on the character of those uh, Supreme Court judges. Lenaola and Mwilu, mm -hmm. they were being referred to the Wakora network, which again one uh, fails to understand. Why would you want to attack the persona of the judges instead of uh, attacking the judgments? Mm -hmm. And then the fundamental issue you, you raise, Supreme Court judges are employed to do only one thing, to listen to presidential petitions, which ordinarily would come in once every five years. So one fails to understand how a judge can actually run away from that responsibility mm -hmm. and then they go home smiling. Because as we see right now, nothing has happened. I doubt whether there's any disciplinary measure which has been taken against uh, those judges. And then of course there's the intimidation. That those who form the view that uh, the attack on uh, Justice Milu's uh, bodyguard or driver was meant to send a message. So the, the people who, who think there is an uh, intimidation. Mm -hmm. So as we move forward to this case, it, it's uh, important for us to, to look at this position, whether or not will actually have uh, a quorum, whether all the judges this, this time around will make it. And uh, if they decide to annul the election, whether that uh, outcome will be accepted by the, both political parties in Kenya, that's uh, NASA and Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And also, whether or not, there's somebody who is intimidating them as we have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Because again, in as much as these judges are men and women of very high moral standing, but when you're getting intimidated by calls that are... Uh, after this election, we are going to revisit this. People may be a bit intimidated. And that's the reason why we say that for Kenya, you need to stand up for something, even if it's going to cost you your life or whether it's going to harm your family, provided you are on the right side of the law. Hesbon, do you think these judges are going to operate minus the pressure we're talking about, the intimidation? Well, I think they've come out clearly and say that they are, you know, willing to take uh, the ultimate, you know, price for standing uh, firm within the frameworks of the law. But again, you have to revisit what happened on 25th of, of uh, October, uh, you know, on 25th and on 24th. I mean, those incidences are not very interesting. Mm -hmm. And when you say, where will this leave the judiciary? It's not a question of where it will leave the judiciary. It's a question of where are we pushing the judiciary as uh, political elites, as members of, of, of different political uh, sides? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we allowing them? Because they are competent. Are we allowing them the space? to do what they know how to do. The reason why they are the Supreme Court judges and all the other caricatures outside there are not is because they are qualified. Mm -hmm. So if they are given the opportunity and the framework to do their work, uh, just like Kavemba said, that it doesn't matter whether it is favoring you or not. That mm -hmm. is what the law 
states that will have to abide by that. If they uphold uh, the victory of President Uhuru Kenyatta, there's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. If they annul that election, we can only prepare for another election. Yes, and yes, there's something uh, I would want to say. Uh -huh. You ask, is, is it too much for them? Yes. And I, I want to concur with him. It can't be too much for them. Mm -hmm. Just like it is, can't be too much for you hosting us here, mm -hmm. uh, it, irrespective <laughs> of our characters, irrespective of what come to say here. You, the, the, the people who gave you the mandate to host these shows are, have but, faith but in but your but ability. But I've never felt to, to attend, I mean, to to work, I'm always here. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the, of the Supreme Court, <laughs> the judges will be. No, I, I wouldn't want to talk about that until the reasons why they did. You see, that that thing is also the, it was you know a day's notice. I don't know whether it was a day or hours notice for mm -hmm. them to appear. So I wouldn't really want to delve into why they didn't come on that particular day. But I of course don't expect them not to show up for this because there is no reason. Time now there is yeah. enough notice, mm -hmm. and everybody knows. And like he says, that is one of the. It is not the only thing I would want to correct him, but that is one of the things that they. They, they are the only ones who have the exclusive original jurisdiction to hear such matters that a presidential petition cannot be filed in any other court other than theirs. But there are other matters that they also deal with, only that they do it as uh, appellate jurisdiction. Yeah, those are secondary, as, those as, are secondary as, matters. Yeah, appellate, that's why I'm saying, appellate mm. jurisdiction, not yeah. the, the original. Uh -huh. But the thing is this, you know, the, 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 the Supreme Court, like any other court, mm -hmm. should look at what is before them and the evidence and the law. It mm -hmm. should not be about how many people will feel bad if we rule this way or how many people will feel good if we rule this way. Because if they look at it that way, then they will have lost it from the word go. Mm -hmm. They should do whatever they are doing based on the law and evidence. I think it's important that all of us have faith in, in, in the judiciary. Now we have like three <laughs> minutes before we end our, our, our first uh, bit of the show. Now dismiss very briefly your expectation from the judi judiciary this time round and how is the petitions this time different from the one that was filed after the August 8th election? Very briefly. Well, well you know, the real the major difference is that the key player during the last petition, Mr. Raylo Dinga, is not in court in person. So even the interest is going to be very minimal. Because as we all know in Kenya, if Raylo Dinga is not at a place, then it's no longer, it's not very interesting from a, a news perspective. Mm -hmm. So I doubt whether people are going to be glued to their TV sets, watching the proceedings at A to Z. They'll probably wait for the final outcome. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing again in this, the, the, the petitioners are still challenging the process. Yes. Because you see, the, the, the numbers are very clear. So the people are beginning to wonder, are we going to have access to the Kim's kit proper? Are we going to have access to the server proper so that they can get the information? And especially on the biometrics. Because the number given of 1.6 million people who have issues with their, their biometrics, but this time around uh, found their way to come and vote, mm -hmm. that is going to be a big issue. And then, of course, there's the little matter of uh, the Supreme Court orders which were issued earlier on, that uh, the IBC should open up uh, their server. I'm unable to understand why they were not able to open the server for for August 8th, mm -hmm. and this time around around on 26th, they've been able to open it. So I suspect a, a clever chap may go to the Supreme Court as an interested party and have IBCL for contempt of court. Mm -hmm. Because for NASA supporters, they say, if you open the server around the 26th, then you can actually, sorry, on the 8th of August, then you can actually identify the winner. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that you begin to wonder, who in Kenya has got the guts to disobey the Supreme Court and go home smiling or go to the bank smiling? Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned they need very smart people and apparently IBC have dropped some of their lawyers. Yes, Kavemba, your, your comment on that? Yeah, the, di the difference between this and the last one is that this was not very competitive. Uh -huh. And unlike in the, the other petition where one of the parties was claiming that there is a possibility that he was the winner, no one is claiming that, uh, that in this election. So for, for who won this election, it is very clear. So actually, the, nobody is going to, no one has come out to... To, to, to allege that their, their victory or their votes were stolen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the main focus is on the process, to try and uh, discredit the, the process. But about who won is not in doubt, mm -hmm. especially during the uh, October. <laughs> that is the main, the very main, because you see the margins, even the ones, all the others who are on the ballot, none of them has come out to, you know, allege any impropriety or allege that their votes were wrongly given to someone else. Mm -hmm. So that particular aspect is going to be a game changer, that it, it is really not in dispute who won the 26th October election. Mm -hmm. Hasbun, very briefly, we're out of time. Of course, we've seen the state house has been yeah, very silent. Yeah, this have taken my time. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the difference, just like they've said, is a question of the process. Yes. I mean, it's not about numbers. We know that President Turu Kenyatta won the, the, 20, uh, the, August, the October 26th election, mm -hmm. and that is not in doubt. What we are looking at is the legality and the irregularities that characterize the process and whether it is enough 
to annul that election. Uh, Kavemba has talked about the other competitors who never came out and said anything. I don't think they were competing President Uru Kenyatta, they were competing the spoiled votes. Well said, Esbon. Of course, we'll continue <laughs> with this discussion right here on the Sunday edition. And we have uh, still a lot lined up for you at a time when CIA became the first county to debate and pass NASA's motion of setting up a People's Assembly. And later on, Busia, Vihiga, as well as Homer Bay followed suit. Those are four counties from a possible 19 NASA strongholds. These are counties who, you know, arguably didn't participate in the October 26th uh, presidential uh, rerun. We'll discuss that in detail and what that these, uh, what, uh, the People's Assembly really means. Where else did this kind of assembly take place in the world? We'll continue with this discussion right here on Sunday edition. Don't go too far. We'll be right back. Stay with us.